one spawning valve to rule them all. Forged in the cellars of Troll, spawned it 2.0. Maybe not in a cellar, maybe more like in a garage or something. I don't know, but yeah, I, I kind of guess that ruined the moment. So yeah, let's get on with the show. Michael finally got me the new table, stainless steel, foldable, so I could do these things a little bit better. Ooh, in style, it's so heavy. Oh, maybe it's even too shiny for this day. It's a very hot day here in Sweden. We're gonna have a look at the Spandi 2.0 today, compared with the Spandi 1.0, which I have been using for years. Strong, the inventor of this, sent me the, the first one and this I got from Brewgoat, today's sponsor. So we're going to compare them. Yeah, obviously it's looking at it right now and uh, we can see how they work, how to dial it in and also in different ways you could use it. Yeah, let's get into that. I'm Dr. Hans, this is Dr. Hans Brewery, my channel about beer and home brewing. So if you want to learn with me how to come better at beer and brewing, consider becoming a subscriber and do hit that little bell so you get notifications when I put out a new video. And of course, help out by liking and sharing this video. Yeah, uh, it's a super hot day. Let's get all the stuff out and uh, I'm thinking also, I need a beer. This is my Amarillo Pale Ale, comes in at 3.8%, perfect for those hot summer days. This is still, of course, hazy, but it is only six days young from brew day. So, kegged it last morning, yesterday morning. Ooh. This was, of course, fermented under pressure. Recipe for that beer already up in the big Dr. Hans recipe book for my patrons to dig into. So if you want to help out, support the channel, you may consider patron or channel membership. Trong sent me the Spandit 1.0, which I have been using for years and really love. Trong explained it this way. I couldn't find a perfect spanning valve so I built one, one myself and with the upgrade to the 2.0 well best just got better nothing come close to this spanning valve and now it's even better we're gonna go into the upgrades of course I have tried all spanning valves and uh, most of them have break down on me even though this has been my go-to spanning valve all the others have like broken down but have you tried the plastic one? Yes, I tried that one also. Now, butt off. The spandit is of course a spanning valve, but with its precision, like industrial precision, and Trong doesn't only sell these for homebrewers, because uh, we're not really like worthy of, of this product maybe. But yeah, if you really want a tool that holds for years, and I... I don't know if I dare to tell you this, if Trong is watching, the inventor and, and still maker of this thing. He makes them at home in his garage or something to keep the quality. I've, I've been really abusing this one and uh, that's why I built this little contraption instead, which I used yesterday for the uh, transfer of this beer from the... Uh, fermenter into the keg so the idea with this one is that we will save on our spandit because I've been using this also for transferring close transferring I hook up the beer line from the pressurized fermenter into the keg and uh, put some gas on so we have equal uh, gas in the both two vessels I have a link down below to my seal transfer video then I put the, the spandit valve on the receiving vessel and uh, adjust the, the flow. But so many times beer have gone through this bandit and it still works, but yeah, you shouldn't really do that. This is an investment. So instead you can use something like this. 
It's a simple invention. I made it over at Brewgoat, so you can, I will link to this down below also, so you can go and check it out. You can build your own. All the parts are on the, the Brewgoat homepage for, for this one. This is Pusen 1.0, and uh, it's gonna be an upgrade to this, so it actually fits to the Spandit also. More about that. People have been asking about why you need this, like a blow-off. This is not like a blow-off, but of course, this is the thermometer, and we use this when we dial in our spandit and also for reading the actual fermentation. We're reading the bubbles. So it, this is just for that. It's not to protect against, it's not an airlock, even though it looks that way. So obviously, this is much more handy with the, the new small thermometer. And also, the big change is visual here. This part is see through now, this ain't. And also, the Spandit 2.0 can be deassembled. The first one couldn't. Now, everything takes apart. So that's nice. There will be no more construction of the version 1, so we will only have the, the version 2 now. But if you already have a version 1, should you upgrade? No, I wouldn't upgrade if you don't need another one. This is, as I said, this is the perfect spandrel well, perfect just got better. So I wouldn't like upgrade to the new one if you don't have any problems with it. Because yeah, as I said, I have been abusing this, running beer th through it so many times. And then I have just hooked up my cleaning system. You should really build that cleaning with a pump. Don't have it here right now, uh, but I will link down below also to that video if I remember. If not, Google Dr. Hans cleaning, I don't know, check down below. So I've just run sanitizer through it when things have happened and it continues to work as good as new. Don't treat your spandit that way, instead use something like this. I will show you how this works in a bit also. Let's check out how you dial in the pressure you want. This video is sponsored by Brewgoat, the friendly Swedish homebrew supplier. But they ship all over Europe, so if you want to grab yourself the Spandit or some other cool products, like make a pre-order on the new Fermented King Junior coming from Keg King uh, some around August, want to check them out, first link in the description. Thank you, Brewgoat. Let's get on with the video. So I will use a mini keg for this demonstration. It fits better here with the table, but it's the same if you're using this on the Fermentosaurus or on the Fermzilla or Cornelius keg if you're fermenting that. We're gonna talk about that also, some tips and tricks that you can, you can do. So I fill this up with, with wort and yeast, so we have technically beer. And I put the pressure on here, I will put for this demonstration, more pressure than, than we need. So we're sitting like 25 PSI. So let's say I wanted this at just like 22, one and a half bar, something like that. I would just release gas. Uh, don't like release it too fast if you don't crack the, the opening here. This is just filled with water. You don't need to fill this up with star sand. Now we can speed it up. So we're just releasing gas until we have the pressure we want here. And when we hit the pressure we want, we just close it until it stops bubbling somewhere around there. And we are set. And where you set this, it actually stays there. Some other spanning valve have been trying, have had some issues with the temperature in the, the room changes, but I haven't noticed any such a thing with, with this device, really. Cheers. And I haven't been able to break it like every other spanning valve. So now you could go about your fermentation and when this is fer fermenting, you will see bubbling here. So you can monitor the speed of the fermentation. And when you see that fermentation are like slowing down, you could even crank it. What you could do is put some gas on it and dial it in again so you would know exactly what pressure it is. Or you could just increase the pressure and come back and do it again. But the easiest thing is to put 
some more pressure on it and dial it in so you get the carbonation level you want. And this would be the same procedure if you were fermented in a Cornelius keg or a Fermzilla, fermenter, king, vessel, fermenter source, it doesn't matter, it's the, it's the same. This will fit it all. One cool thing you can, even though you don't ferment under pressure, if you have a keg, you could, when the fermentation slows down, you could mow it over to the keg then and there and put the spandit on it and put so much CO2 volumes you want in your in your beer, use a calculator for that and, and dial in this and the end of the fermentation will carbonate your beer and you most likely will not get the same amount of oxygen in your beer either. You could in that stage also dry hop directly in the keg if you have a floating pickup uh, like the cask witch for example which I made a video of but I also showed some other floating pickup I will link to that video also down below if I re remember what I've been also using the the, the, the spandit for which I will stop now I'm so sorry Trong I have been abusing the, the spandit is when I've been moving my beer from my fermenter to my keg. I've put the same amount of pressure of gas in the keg that I have in the fermenter. As I said, I do have a video on this, so you can go and check that out. I guess you're gonna run through it very quickly here. And I hook up beer to beer and hook up the gas to the uh, fermenter, just at the same pressure. I put the spandit on here, closed, and then I have just opened it up until it started bubbling and I could measure like the, the speed of the transfer that way. But I almost every time I run and do things, I record things on my channel. I often keg on brew days, so there's a lot of things happening. And so many times uh, I have run beer through it. But that has been the point because I've just put this in like a bucket or something and all the beer that were transferred over have would go into the bucket instead of my floor. I just have to remember to crack this lid so we don't get a spraying effect. So I obviously can't do that because I want to like have a security to lead off the beer into another vessel so I don't get a wet floor. That's why I invented this little thing called Pysen. Yes, it's a joke for the Swedes. Pysen 1.0. It's going to be an upgrade. Going to talk about that. Uh, you can build one yourself. It's not very complicated. Or you can buy it from Brewgoat. Check out the parts over Brewgoat. I'm wasting CO2 again, so uh, yeah, do hit the like button. This is a sponsored video, but the reason that Brewgoat is selling this bandit is because I've been a happy user of the, the first version for years. And that was one of the first thing I said to Michael when I started working with, with, with Brewgoat is, we're gonna sell this one, the Spandit. It's amazing. I've been trying to get some products that haven't really been available to the, the Swedes and the Europeans now, so more of us can enjoy this. You will enjoy this. An awesome spanning valve. Yes, yes, I'm nerdy, I know. This is still the receiving vessel, but instead of the spanning, I've been using this one. It, this is a very simple device. I've been trying it out now for two beers and it works fine. I, I've just took uh, a bottle and uh, you can make your own bottle, it doesn't come with a bottle. But see to it that it is in tight or you have a bigger hole. You can use an ordinary soda pet bottle or what you want. And we'll just release pressure, you see. But this was full. I would just control the speed that way instead. And I will put this into a bucket. Don't use your expensive, because this is uh, expensive, not for what it is, but it is a lot of money. So 
don't use it for transfers that I have been doing with this one. Well, this is still working and I, I'm amazed by that, but yeah, do something simple like this instead. I know there are other ways to transfer, but I do it this way that I push gas on my fermenter, beer to beer, and then off gas like this. Do something like this. Go and build it. Ooh. Cheers. Next day, when I was editing this video, I discovered that I forgot to tell you about this port and the upgrade that I want to make to the Pison so it will fit on here. Here we have a plug. If you unplug that, you could add another hose onto another coupling, onto another fermenter or keg. That means that you could be spawning several of fermenters from one spawned. And you can also do some other cool stuff. It means that you could buy the power of fermentation from one vessel, leave the, the CO2 here to another vessel and control the amount of volume you want in the second vessel. So if you have a, a keg, you could uh, carbonate your keg from the gases from the fermentation or you use it to like push out sanitize the solution. He call it this the 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 Swiss army knife. So the stuff you can do with it. The Pison wasn't really invented to be a, a sidekick to uh, the Spandit. Tong already has some uh, accessories to, to this that I hopefully will get to try out and if there's something cool I will try to get them to, to brew goat. This was invented to just be a adjustable release valve for when doing transfers. But this hose does not fit on here. I think we need a six millimeter. So the 1.5 upgrade to the Pison will fit the, the Spandit. But for what it is, this works like a charm and some people have been trying them and really like them. But it's, it's, it's an easy build, you can build one for yourself. If you're in the market for a really good spanning valve, I highly recommend the, the Spandit. And I will link to, to Bro Goat down below where you can order it. And I will also, for your US guys, link to uh, Chong's eBay site so you can buy it off of him also. Whew. So guys, hold on for the um, grain to glass video of this brew day but that's it for today if you haven't already consider becoming a subscriber do hit that little bell to get notifications when i put out a new video and don't forget to drop a like before you leave if you didn't like this at all smash that dislike button twice ah, nice so cheers and thanks for watching dr hans out now go and watch this video